Greetings, cyber truckers and citizens of the Interbubs. This is Rain Dog coming at you from this Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2 series. In the previous episode, we were on our way to Metz from Paris for another delivery. But guess what, guys? The game got updated, and that means that the mission that we were on has been reset. That's just how this game works. If you don't finish a mission when they do a game update, they actually clear your freaking progress and take you back to your previous checkpoint. Oh, well, that's just the way the freaking cookie crumbles, guys. So if we go back to the quick job menu, we will see that we are still in Paris, France and that, uh, well, this uh, trip to Metz is still up for grabs. So I tell you what, guys, we are going to take this job anyway. Um, it's kind of annoying because we have to redo this job, but that's okay because at least we kind of know where to go now. Um, and I, I'm not entirely sure why... Oh, it, it, it's kind of annoying that when they update the game, you lose your progress, and they, they, they kind of don't warn you about that either. I mean, I know I know that now, right? So I'm going to make sure that next time I do a mission, I'm going to I'm going to finish the mission before logging off. But you know, kind of frustrating, kind of annoying, but that's totally cool, guys. It looks like we um, are they've taken us back to the point where we had half a tank of gas left, so we're kind of. Yeah, we're kind of a uh, we're kind of one episode behind where we were in the previous episode. So let's just call this some sort of inception video, right? Where we've gone back in freaking time. In fact, I c I remember we have to cross that bridge. We have to turn right, get onto the freaking motorway, and uh, and head back to Metz. But this gives us a really good opportunity, guys, to not get freaking fined. Um, although, if I look at my money, it looks like I like the fines that we got on that journey are still there and they didn't give us our money back so um all in all that is kind of annoying they updated the game that's really cool but they cancelled my freaking mission at, but didn't refund the freaking fines that i got on the way to, to the mission and they they uh, didn't you know refill my fuel tank so that's kind of annoying um guys Developers, if you're watching this, <laughs> um, you need to do something about that, man. Seriously, it's kind of weird. But anyway, guys, we are on our way back to Metz from Paris for, with this delivery. And uh, this is going to get us £2,000 approximately. And that's going to take us £2,000 closer to our goal of about £70,000. Um, pretty, pretty ridiculous. But we need to say... Oh, I'm on the wrong side of the road. I am on the wrong side of the road. Um... I am on the wrong side of the road. Uh, my my bad, <laughs> my bad, everyone. I'm 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 backing up. I'm backing up. I'm backing up. Um, my bad. Please don't hate me. Please don't hate me. Oh lord. Oh goodness. This is this this is this is not good. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, sorry, sorry, everyone. My bad. Um. My bad, used to driving on the left hand side of the road, okay? Noob, noob driver here. Nothing to look at, nothing to see. Noob driver over here. <laughs> well, all I can say is thank the freaking ender gods we didn't get a fine for that, but uh, that was almost an accident right there. Uh, but we are back on track, cyber diggity dogs. I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kick this bad boy into fast forward mode, and we're gonna pick it up once again uh, where we left off at the end of the previous episode, and I'm gonna refuel on the way there, and I do believe, where were we? Um, uh, we, we had about, I don't know, we had, uh, we had about 60 miles to go or something like that, but guys, I will see you on the other side of this freaking complaint, and we will pick up from where we left off in the previous episode. Complaint!
All right, Cyberdogs, we are back, and this is basically where I got fined last time. I think it's because I just jumped that stop over there. I just literally went straight through it at like 50 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if you guys noticed in that fast forward that I've basically made the same mistakes that I made last time again. <laughs> Although this time around, I have been indicate indicating more, which is good, and trying to stay in the in the in the lanes and not go over the middle of the road. But uh, still a little bit of work to be done on my freaking road etiquette up in this jazz, man. Damn! Um, but here we are, guys. We are on our way. We've got about 81 miles to go until we get to Metz for this delivery and 2,000 pounds in the freaking bank, baby. And um, what I'm trying to do over here, guys, is save enough money. Ooh, my bad. Um, I want to, uh, what I want to do is, is save enough money to buy my own truck, but I want to try and get as far away from London or from the United Kingdom as possible and then do an epic cross Euro journey. Maybe if we can get all the way to Poland or something um, and then just do an, a ridiculous journey. I mean, it, it, it'll take like an hour to drive all the way from Poland and that is going to net us a freaking tidy sum, maybe 20 you know, 10, 20 grand, man. Bam, in the belly. And that's gonna get us one step closer to getting our own truck. But guys, while I was driving along in fast forward mode, my brain wasn't in fast forward mode, obviously. But um, I was thinking about another interesting story I wanted to tell you guys um, on my journeys with my brother from the same freaking mama, the real Gox, in Paris. We've just left Paris on this journey. So I wanted to tell you guys another story that I shared with Goxy. We were in the Louvre, which is a giant ass museum. Um, in Paris, one of the most famous museums in the world. Most of you guys should know about it, um, but some, maybe some of you guys don't. But let me tell you guys, it is an absolutely freaking crazy ass museum. Giant ass museum does not do it justice, man. It is way bigger than a giant ass, let me tell you. It is freaking gi freaking enormous. And there is so much epic stuff there, it is absolutely ridiculous. The only problem is that it's it has so many tourists, so many people in there, that it's quite an unpleasant experience. But damn, do they have some sweet ass jazz in there. Let me just quickly pay this toll, toll gate and I'll tell you guys more about it. So, my, uh, my brother and I, the real Goxie, and I were in the Louvre and what we wanted to go see was of course, check at this, I can stick my head out the window. That's so awesome. <laughs> we wanted to go see the, the, the most famous thing that is in the Louvre and probably, oh, my bad. And probably one of the most famous things on the face of this planet and that is of course guys the Mona Lisa painting now if every single one of you should know what the Mona Lisa is and um, if you don't know what the Mona Lisa if you don't know what the Mona Lisa is there's a face palm for you through the internet go and go and find out what the Mona Lisa is man seriously Anyway guys, we went to uh, the, the wing of the museum that has the Mona Lisa in it and when I say that that room was filled with tourists, I mean, I, 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 I try and close my eyes now, actually that's a bad idea, but <laughs> I, I close my eyes and try to remember back to what it was like being in that room and literally there, there, uh, there's probably 20 rows of humans between uh, the back of the crowd and the front of the crowd where the, where the Mona Lisa is. Now, the Mona Lisa is a very small painting. Um, I mean, it's no bigger than, you know, I don't know, a, a, re a reasonably sized computer screen, I guess? I mean, it is freaking small, people. And it's behind a ridiculous pane of bulletproof glass. And I mean, it, it's just, it's, it's insane. And the only way that you can actually see any details if you try to get up close. So the Goxy and I, we're not small guys, you know, we're South African, man. We're like quite beastly, manly men, you know what I mean? I mean, we got, we, we, we got some muscles, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, we've got Dutch roots. We, we used to build dikes and, and push the ocean back and stuff. I mean, we, you know, we, we come from freaking hardcore, <laughs> hardcore lineage up in here, man. And, uh, the people, you know, I mean, most of the tourists who were there were pretty small, you know, lot, lots of tourists from the east, lots of tourists from, from Europe, and, you know, lots of European um, people are quite small. So, you know, the Goxie and I had to jam our way through th this crowd of, dare I say, pretty small people to try and get there. And we just ended up looking like bullies, really, because we were, you know, trying to, we were sort of shoving these people away. To, oh my goodness, the, the rain is coming, people. Damn! Anyway, we, we, um, eventually got to about five rows from the freaking front after a, a bunch of pushing, shoving, and grabbing. Oh god. Oh god. It has begun. Oh god. 
Windscreen wipers. Windscreen wipers. Oh. What is windscreen wipers again? Oh, <laughs> that's that's my flash. I got to turn my lights on though. Um, windscreen wipers is I can't remember. Oh, I just turned off my engine. <laughs> oh god. I'm noobing out over here, guys. I just quickly want to check what windscreen wipers are again. I keep forgetting wipers P. I freaking pressed P, man. I, I pressed P. All right, let's let, let's press P one more time. P. P for pothole. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we are back. We are rolling once again, guys. Anyway, <laughs> my brother and I got to about five rows from the front to see that freaking Mona Lisa. And we were staring at it, and we, we both stared at it pretty intently for about two or three minutes, sort of admiring it, and I, I don't know, trying to figure out why it was so famous. And Goxie leaned over to me, and he was like, Dude, she is staring straight into my freaking soul. And I looked up into that lady's eyeballs, and let me tell you something, guys. She stares straight into your soul. Maybe that's why the painting is so famous, you know? Um, it's kind of weird. Her stare is very hypnotic, and it does feel like she's looking straight at you. Now, I had read a rumor, or had heard a rumor, that wherever you stand in the room with the Mona Lisa, it looks as if she is looking at you, straight at you, like straight into your eyeballs. So I said to the Gox, I said to the real Gox, dude, let's do an experiment, man. Let's move around this room and actually see if this crazy lady does stare straight into your soul from wherever you stand in the room. So Goxie and I were pushing our way through tourists to try and get get to different angles. Uh, oh my goodness, this rain is hazardous, man. Damn. And uh, we were pushing everybody out the way. We went from the left side to the right side. We went further back. We even went almost perpendicular to the freaking thing, man. We went to like as as strong as an angle as we could. We were trying to trick that lady, man. We, you know, we were trying to we were trying to break the myth. I don't know how many of you guys watch MythBusters, man, but me and Goxie love that show, man. Um, and we were like, we're gonna bust this myth. But let me tell you something, guys. That crazy ass Mona Lisa, she stares straight into your freaking eyeballs from wherever the jazz you stand in that room. It doesn't matter if you are perpendicular, way at the back, duck down, looking up, sit, uh, sit on each other's shoulders, looking down. She stares straight at you from wherever you are in the room. Almost like one of those horror movies where the eyes of a painting move. Um, when someone enters the room. It is actually quite freaky guys and actually the reason number one reason why the Mona Lisa has now become my favorite freaking painting man seriously how epic is that that some dude made this painting hundreds of years ago and it has this ridiculous effect uh, you know it's almost like special effects man it's almost like he made a like a digital paint like a, like an illusion or something man it's absolutely awesome um, but yeah man me and Goxie had an awesome time in the Louvre we got lost um, but there's so much stuff to see in there, man. You need like two or three days to see everything in that place. Absolutely ridiculous, if I do say so myself. And speaking of ridiculous people, I've been admiring the interior of this truck that we're driving. I see that it's got... Um, uh, look at this, man. It, the interior is made out of, out of like cheap ass felt. All the buttons are plastic. I mean, look at this. I, I don't have any legs. There's no one sitting. Whoa! I'm swerving all over the road. I mean, this truck is budget, man. Damn, this is like an Ikea truck or something. I, I sincerely hope that the first truck we drive does not look as freaking butthole-ish as this thing. Because this thing is nasty. Damn. Although it does have buttons on the steering wheel, which is pretty sweet. That is, that is some uh, pretty highly technically advanced jazz up in there, man. Ooh, a ray of sunshine is coming through the clouds. Yeah. Right, sweet. Well, it looks like the road, the, 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 the rain is clearing. And for some reason, I cannot keep in, in lane. Guys, I am trying my hardest to keep in this lane, I promise you. But this truck's handling is actually really bad. Um, it, it's almost as if its wheels are unaligned. I don't know if you guys have ever traveled in a car or a vehicle when the wheels are unaligned. Let's just turn off our windscreen wipers there. It is actually quite, um, it feels very much like that. It, it feels like this truck keeps veering off to the left, so I keep having to make an adjustment. It's kind of annoying. Um, but anyway, the sun has cleared. Wow, that was a quick shower, I must say. Oh, we got a turn here. Indicate. Check the mirrors. Oh, that was almost an accident. My bad, dude. Uh, let's get into this lane, and we're going to take this highway off section to Metz, Dijon. Excellent. Oh, man, this is epic. Okay, so... 
even though we lost our last um <laughs> our last mission we are now well on track to get there we've got 16 miles to go but i am dreading what is to come people and you know what that is right for those of you guys who've been watching the series up up to date yep it is the parking time um <laughs> uh, not not really looking forward to parking this thing especially with the it's bad steering but i think in the last time we we parked the trailer we did pretty well we did better than the first time that's for sure the first time we almost freaking jackknifed the, the truck but hopefully this time i'm going to do a little bit better guys um i'm just going to indicate to turn right over here at this traffic circle i oh, know it's just a just an off ramp up in here oh look, matt check at this this is so beautiful man it's nice little foresty area looking pretty sweet oh man maybe we can uh, you know spend a, a night in net see what it's all about man partake of the local cuisine and whatnot we go on a romantic walk down the, the river if there is a river anyone out there been to Metz is it awesome <laughs> all right taking a left turn over here guys checking my mirrors there was nothing in the left lane and it looks like our drop-off point is right about now which is amazing that we made it and we didn't get fined which is awesome we didn't have an accident we did go up the wrong side of the road once though but we managed to un oh, oh. Crash vehicle offense? What? Oh, oh. I crashed into this truck. I crashed right at the end also, which is annoying. The exact same thing happens to me in Minecraft. When, when I get to the end of an episode, a freaking creeper always comes out of nowhere to blow my ass up. Oh, well. We got another fine there, guys. 300 freaking euros for that one. Um, but I, I'm sure I was clear of that truck, but clearly not. Oh, man. That is so freaking annoying. We're never going to get our own freaking truck at this rate, man. Damn! Oh, well. <laughs> you know what they say. Just keep on trucking. All right, here we go, guys. We are coming to the right-hand turn over here. Bosped or Postbed. That is the corporation that we are delivering for. So they'll be happy to see that their jazz is en route. Oh! Traffic light! Right. The truck we're driving is black though, which is pretty sweet, man. Check it out. This truck is this truck is purple. Bam. Right, back in the cockpit. Let's do this. Bus, get out of my way. There's not even there's no one even in that freaking bus, man. That is the most boring tour ever. Just the driver. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go, guys. And a right turn into Postsped. Oh, yes, we're delivering seeds, aren't we? Oh, this butthole is in my freaking way. We're going to have to back up. All right, here we go. Sweet. Right, hopefully we have quite a lot of space to, to uh, park this trailer. You know, when the, when the spaces are really tight, that's when it becomes really freaking hard. Then you have to awesome powers that bad boy. Um, I've discovered a recruitment agency. Can you... Oh, that's awesome. To skip parking the trailer? Nope, we're not going to skip parking the trailer. Okay, here we go again. All right, here we go again. So, what we've got to try and do... I think this view is actually best. So what I'm going to try and do, right, is get right up to this wall over here. Then what we're going to try and do is come to and straighten, 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 get back into the cockpit, straighten, straighten, straighten. Are we straight? I'm concentrating, people. I'm concentrating. Oh my god, are we gonna do this first time? No. <laughs> Almost. Straighten, straighten, straighten. Alright. Let's see if we can do this, guys. 
I'm determined to learn how to do this, man. Seriously. All right. I'm going to turn. Okay. Now, now, what we need to do is straighten out, right? Straighten, 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 straighten. Get this wheel nice and straight. And this is the one. Come on, baby. No! How is that, how is that not the one? All right. So we just got to come a little bit more like this. Straighten, 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 straighten. Straighten that wheel. This is the one. This is the freaking one. Yes! Yes! Come on! Butthole! That's the one! Oh. Okay, this is, this is definitely the one. This is, this is the one. This is the one, people. This is the best we've ever done. You have got to be kidding me. You have got to be, you have got to be kidding me. That... How is that not the one? Okay, now. Guys, seriously, man. There we go, we did it! Oh, sweet. Okay, whew, damn, son, I was beginning to sweat. Um, there we go guys, we have completed our Paris to Metz job, 165 miles, 4 hours and 43 minutes taken, um, and we got to level 2, yes, we leveled up, excellent, that is awesome, we got 200 and 2,838 pounds, 311 XP, which is freaking sweet. In the next episode, guys, we're going to be distributing more of our skill points and getting on another freaking job out of here. Well, actually, you know what, I'm not even going to... I mean, we might as well just distribute our skill point now. I'm going to give it to eco driving once again. We're going to stick to our eco driving plan so that when we get our own truck, we will be saving on fuel uh, from the very first day that we start driving our own truck. But guys, thank you so much for watching this freaking episode. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. You smack that freaking like button. And uh, if you are from somewhere new on the interbubs, welcome to the Rain Dog channel. Hit the subscribe button. It is right over here for your freaking ass to hit. <coughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching this Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2 series. This has been Ren Diggity Dog, your brother from another freaking mama, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody!